They went out. He said, put your trust in the Lord and you will be established. Put your trust in the Lord. Keep in mind, they are battling in faith. Battling, it's total, they've got to totally trust God now because their lives depend on it. If God doesn't come through, they're all dead. You understand the faith that's going on here? Yet they are taking action by going out. Their action is showing their faith. And their faith is demonstrated in their action. Trust in the Lord and you will be established. You can't see it in English, but in Hebrew, there's something about that. You see in Hebrew, the word for trust or faith, put your trust in, is, comes from aman. We get the same word, amen, from it. Aman means it's a sure thing. Aman, and it means to, for me to put, for me to put my faith in God, means God is a sure thing, and I am, I am going to be sure about what's sure. That's faith. Uh, and which is, aman, amen. When you say amen, you're saying I am sure about God who is a sure thing. And so what it means, and it also means, the same word means to be strong, immovable, established like a rock. So in Hebrew, it goes together. It says, trust in God, Amon, and you will, be, you will be strong, which is also from Amon, the same word. If you, the exact, you are as strong as your faith. You are as weak as your faith. You want to be strong? Believe. Trust God. Trust and you will succeed, it says. Whatever your situation, trust you will be immovable as your faith is sure in Him who is sure. If, you, if He is sure, but you're not sure about Him, then you're not going to be sure or, or, or you're, gonna, you're not going to be steady. If He is a rock and you're not sure about that rock, He'll be there, he, the strength is there, but you won't have the strength. But if you found your life upon the rock, then you will be immovable when the storm comes. 21. When he consulted all the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire. What did he say now? He should be appointing the soldiers. He should be appointing the generals. Even if they're not going to do it with the Lord a different way, he should be talking to all the soldiers, captains and lieutenants and sergeants and all that. But instead, who's he talking to? He's talking to the worship team. Those who just sang to the Lord. The praising, the Levites, the, those who, who sang. Why? God is making a point here. Victory comes in praising. We don't understand how, why, but I've seen it happen. I've seen it work. I don't understand it, but it happens. Victory comes in praising God and worship. So often we're caught, in the, caught up in the details of the fight that we're not praising God. It says here before the rest of the details, more important is praise God. Even if you haven't worked out the problem, you're not going to work. First, just, just praise God and keep praising God. You're not, not going to work out all the problems. Praise God through it. I mean, do the thing, do what you have to do, but praise God most importantly. Your point, see, the, prob, the, the, the point of it all is not the problem. The problem is to point you to God, the point of the problem in your life, any problem you're dealing with or you will deal with, is to, that you would glorify God. The point of the problem is not the problem. The point of the problem is to glorify God by His answer. The victory comes in praising before you see the answer. Before you see the victory, be victorious. That is the first victory. Before you have the victory, you thank God for the victory. The victory may not come the way you want it to, but it will come. If you're in God's will, you're going to have victory. Victory, the first victory is just praising Him and worshiping Him. Get your mind off the problem for a minute. Just start praising God. The victory is right there. But what a strategy God is having them carry out. God is telling you, okay, imagine He's telling you, you're going to fight this war. Remember what it's like. Every time you stand up there, you know it's your last, it could be your last moment on earth. Even if you're fully armed, God says, I want you to fight against this fully armed, 
army with shields, with them. They have the shields, they have the spears, they have the swords, they have the machines, and you are there without it at all. What weapons shall we fight with, Lord? What weapons shall we fight? Imagine you're asking, Lord, what weapon shall I fight these, this army with? Uh, tambourines? Flutes? What? Piccolos? What? Imagine a guy breaks into your house, you know, stop right there. Why? I got a weapon. What? I got a, I got a viola. What? That's right, a viola. You know, seriously, you have all the scenes of the mafia with uh, having a violin case, but it's really a machine gun. But in God, the violin is more powerful. The, the, the praise is more powerful. You see, we are like that. It's more powerful. When we were in Cuba, we went to one church, and we arrived, and we were gonna, gonna, I, was gonna, I spoke, and I blew the shofar, and it turned out they were praying for a shofar before they even knew we were coming. They were praying that th th there was a shofar that was supposed to be given to that church. And in Cuba, it's very hard to get a shofar. Obviously, it's you know, hard to get anything but a shofar. And so they're praying for it, and, a guy, and someone was coming uh, from another country to bring in them a shofar. We didn't know it. Uh, and they, and, they, and it, it fell through just a few days before we came, and then we came, and they said, they praised God. They were all disappointed. And then they said, the Lord brought us not just a shofar, he brought someone to blow it. You know? And then we ended up having one that we gave to them. And the thing is that, but the thing is that the reason why it could, didn't get in, it didn't get, it didn't get past the airports, because the... the uh, the government that was dealing with it said, this will not go through because this is a weapon. <laughs> this is a weapon. Well, it is. Praise is a weapon. I was looking for a case for the shofar, you know, and, and uh, I was shown a case that was a gun case. And I said, I said, that's good, but I don't think it's going to look good in the airports. I think it rather, so I have like a musical case. They went out before the army and said... They went out, the, these people praising the Lord in front of the army, saying, give thanks to the Lord for His loving kindness is everlasting. That's their war strategy. They have these people coming out, praising the Lord. Hodu Ladonai, give thanks to the Lord. Ki liolam hasdo, His love endures forever. That's Psalm 136. Look how many times it's repeated. And they ever read Psalm 136 and how many times it says, Give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. It must be very important. Or it wouldn't be saying it so much. You must be able, therefore, whatever's going on, it goes, and then it, then it goes, and that's interesting. That Psalm has all these different situations. And then this, and the Red Sea, and this, and this. So many situations. In every situation, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. It must be very important to have on your lips and your heart. How important it is to thank God and to know that the Lord is good and His love is forever. That must be very important for you to have victory, to thank God, to know that He's good and His love is forever. So important to thank God. The, the, somebody who, someone who's a thankful person, thanking God, that's going to be a victorious person. Verse 22. And when they began singing and praising the Lord, set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. They were routed. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey 07644, USA.